I wanted to share a really powerful tip to improve your tarot reading. So most of us do spreads that have some vague concept of past, present, future. Um, I know there are lots of different spreads, but I would say the vast majority of spreads have that format. And whether you're doing a three card spread or a 28 card spread, my best bit of advice for you is to turn the cards over one at a time and read the cards as you see them. So this is a really super spread, just asking about myself, three cards, past, present, future. It is really easy to just turn them all over however many you think you need and immediately focus on bad cards thank goodness I don't have any this time the tower the devil the five of pentacles you go straight to them or on the other hand if there is a future that's really exciting you go straight to that it's easy to let your mind and your focus go straight to the interesting bits or straight to the scary bits and you are missing out the focus of reading each card we say reading the cards because that's what we're doing we're looking at the imagery we're gaining an understanding of what that card means and then we're turning another card we're looking at that card and we're gaining an understanding of what that card means and we are creating a narrative from the individual cards so just like reading a book you start at the beginning of the sentence and you work your way through that's the best way to read tarot and just like a book if you or a sentence if you get to a card and it, you really don't get it and it's really you know you just can't put it into place then it's absolutely fine to pull the next card and come back to a card that's really blocking you or that you just don't get we all it happens to me as well um and often you know when i've finished the spread and i've gone through the cards one by one if it's a larger spread there may be one or two cards that i just don't get then i can look back and i can see them in the context of the narrative and they often make sense because the biggest question i get asked is how do you start to put together the meanings of the cards in a narrative? How do you find the, the meaning between the cards? And the best way is to get used to turning the cards over one by one and understanding what they mean individually, sort of read them as a sentence. So just to demonstrate the Ace of Cups, well, I actually took four whole days off over Easter. Um, I took a break. The Eight of Pentacles is taking a break. It is about looking at life from a different perspective. That is my past. I can validate that. That is accurate. Present, the Wheel of Fortune, making a change. Boy, do I need to make a change. I am in the process of getting that work-life balance in a, in a better blend. Very hard uh, at the moment with the cost of living crisis, but I am determined to get it. And the card for the future is the Knight of Cups. Now, I'd love to say that's a romantic relationship coming my way. I am currently single. Um, but I think it's more likely to mean... Um, writing my second book because the knight of cups i, I nickname it my re, my relationship card my, my loving partner but also it is to me it's the byron card it is about having something creative that ace of cups is heart chakra it doesn't have to be a relationship it can be something really meaningful to you that is leading your life and i think that will be my second book and that is the best way to read the cards I always check the card at the bottom of the pack six pet six of ones I'm happy with that Ooh, put it there about success and visibility it suggests as I thought that the knight of cups is more to do with a creative project that's meaningful to me than a loving relationship and so by reading the cards one by one you get a feeling of the flow and you take your time. I know I read extraordinarily fast. It's my full time profession has been for many years now. But if you're starting out by yourself, if you're starting out, then I really suggest a notepad and pen. And just, you know, as you turn each card, look at it. That's the first thing you do. Look at the card. And then either say out loud or write down, jot a few words in your journal or your notebook what the card is speaking to you. Forget wisdom at this moment. Forget what you think you know. Forget what you should know. 
Just look at the card and let the information speak. Go through the cards one by one. And then when you finish the spreads, if you're reading for yourself, and if you're learning, that's when you can start to look up the cards that maybe you're curious about or the cards that seem really important or the cards that you just don't get. But look up at the end. OK, um, you know, trust yourself first to get into this process of look, read the card and express what it means, either speaking it out loud or writing it down, because it gets it's really hard to learn to do that if you are dependent on a book. OK, so you pick up your book right at the end. Obviously, I've got my book here, Tarot, A Life Guided by the Cards. I wanted to show you I'm a Kindle fanatic. I adore my Kindle. Um, it's nice to have a paper book. Um, but the joy of a Kindle, particularly the Kindle for my book, is it that it's got um, an interactive uh, index so that if you press on, where should we go, the four of wands, I'm hoping this works, yay, it will take you straight to that page. And then basically for each of the cards, I've got a brief description. Um, I look very much at the symbolism with every single card. I relate it to the image because if you're relating the meaning of the card to the image, this is with the Rider Waite deck, but that would stand for many modern decks because most of them are heavily influenced by the Rider Waite deck. Then you don't have to remember the meaning because you are reading the image in the car, in the car, in the card. And then, you know, I've got a few sort of pointers then for a reading. What's kind of morphed into my book now is I wanted to demonstrate the um, the interactive index. Perhaps what's more unusual about my tarot book is as you read it, you'll find that there are sections in italics. Basically, what happened, not such a large one in that one, not everywhere. This is the um, five of ones, perhaps there's a larger italics there. What happens with this book was um, I was working with a creative coach. I was going to do some recordings, actually, of some chants that I use with the runes. And he made kind of an offhand comment and said, how many words have you got stored on your computer to do with tarot? And I had a look and it was a lot. And he basically said, that's a book. And I said, well, I've been updating my notes for the last eight years, you know, and whenever I teach, I hand out really detailed notes. And so what I did was I went through all of my notes. Obviously, I edited them, you know, made sure that they were equally well written for all of the different cards. But then I wrote almost a letter to myself or a book to myself or a reflection um, on where I am now. And I really wanted my true voice, my personal voice woven through the book because most tarot books are textbooks. They are designed to teach you to read the tarot. And I wanted that, but I wanted a story written through as well. And so I wrote my own. So I kind of got off point there, but I really wanted to show you um, my interactive index because I love my Kindle. So just to summarise, when you're doing the tarot reading, turn the cards over, look at the cards, speak out loud, write a few notes, whatever best suits you, but don't turn over the next card till you're ready to. Because any one of us, if I just quickly stack the cards up here, if we are doing a bigger reading, then we are going to get distracted by the best of cards, ooh, the Ten of Pentacles, by the worst of cards, and we're going to miss the narrative of all the cards together.